Uh, for either guy, Eli Mooney, maybe radio. Coach Casey was saying that, like, with every great, somebody has to the throne the great, and LeBron would be the great in this situation. After falling short the last couple of years, do you still feel that you guys are that team that will eventually dethrone LeBron in the East? Yeah, I mean, we we had three opportunities. You know, nothing's never promised. You, we're not sure if we'll get this opportunity again. So it sucks to dwell and sit here and have to go into the summer not knowing um, if the opportunity presents itself again. And, you know, you don't want to look at three opportunities as, as a dud. And, you know, like I said, it's something we got to, you know, understand that if it don't kill you, it make you stronger. You know, we got to carry that over team-wise, individual-wise, and, you know, like I said, get ready for the next go-round. James Lee, and when we fell off in Detroit, Chicago was ready. Can Toronto add another piece this summer and get better? What do you see, uh, Smitty, as far as for Toronto moving forward, what they possibly need to do? You know, Isaiah said all the things that you were hope a team is ready to do because they have the talent there. But Isaiah, I'm looking at this team, they look broken to me. You know, if you lose this series, obviously it would be still some talk, 4-2, 4-3, you go to 7 and you lose to LeBron. But the way they've lost, and they've had pretty much everything other than somebody that can guard LeBron James, they were more athletic. They were supposed to take advantage. Yes, LeBron was going to win his matchups always. But I thought in all the other areas, they were supposed to dominate and rebound it, mm -hmm. dominate and force turnovers when you have so many young guys. And then also in transition, being able to get easy points. And then even in the half court, I thought they were bigger and stronger. Yeah. They couldn't do that. I don't know why, other than this team right now, looks like they are not made up to take the next step, even with all the things they've done. I think it's got to be some shakeups in Toronto. Yeah, and, and you hope that the shakeups – don't ruin the foundation yes. that they've really built. Because they, they don't need a total overhaul. Nope. They really just need like some tweaking and some get better. And can you learn from this experience? Can you continue to learn? And one day, one day, LeBron James may not be this LeBron James that continues to dominate you. One day you may wake up and he's human again. And I, like I said, I go back and I look at Chicago and that's how Chicago looked at us. That fourth year, they looked at us as we were human, right? And, and they broke through. And when they broke through, they dominated for a while. Can Toronto find that, that, that intestinal fortitude to break through? Can they get better? Do they have that, you know, that player? You know, is the Rose in that player that can dominate the East? I don't know. Uh, but they got to find that or add something to it.
What's going on, people? We got to get to it. Let's get to it. Uh, my ass is already late for work, man. <laughs> I got to get up to the post, too. I told Tony to go. Going ahead with Fabi tonight, man. Uh, but let me get this video out so I can get on, get my ass up to the studio, man. Um, first off, congrats to the Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James. Looks like I, I ain't, I ain't even fun to say that he ain't going to the finals. He going back to the goddamn NBA Finals, bro. Um, he, he going to his eighth straight time. Good luck to the Cavs. Probably getting their ass spanked by the Warriors again. Uh, sorry to whoever come out of that other series, but you, you ain't you ain't you ain't getting past LeBron James not this year. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just congratulations to them and. For my Toronto Raptors, you know, congratulations to us, man. I mean, you know, it's it's the end of the season now. We don't need to dwell on what happened in this fucking series. We need to move on, learn our learn, continue to learn from our mistakes against the Cavs, and, and, and learn how to be a better team. Because I'm going to talk about what Isaiah Thomas talked about in a second. Because I think that all Raptor fans need to hear that. Um, but first, starting off, congratulations to this Raptor team. They did some things that they never did before in the franchise history. People need to understand, this team is only 23 years old. This team ain't been around. I bet you at least a little bit more than half of the Raptors fan base has have been able to watch the very first game of this team. The very first game in this franchise history. That's how young this franchise is. This is not an old franchise. The, the rest of these franchises, I can't say... Fans have been able to see their very first games because a lot of these franchises were out before the 80s and 70s. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, unless you was around in the 40s, 50s, and 60s or something, or even the 70s, you know, you probably didn't watch your your team's first game more than likely, man. But a lot of us have, and it's a young team. Like I said, we've only been around for 23 years, man. So we got a lot of, you know, we got a lot of growing up to do, even as a franchise. You know what I'm saying? We not ready yet. It's not our time yet. I think one of the things that I realized about this series, it's just not our time yet, man. I think we was forcing the issue a lot. We was hoping that we could do some things this year. But it's just not our time yet, and that's okay because we'll get there. Um, it will become our time at, at some point. But just congratulations to the season. I mean, this is an amazing season for the Raptors. I really enjoyed the the. This season, we, I mean, we literally only lost 23 times this year before the playoffs started. Literally only 23 times. I mean, we were the first seed. Uh, we led the conference in points, uh, points per game. Uh, we did a lot of things that we didn't do before, and it's all because of the changes that we made, man. We, we took great steps this season. I know we had an ugly finish, but it's life. It's life, and it's all about, life ain't about your failures, man. Life is about how you react to your failures, you know what I'm saying? Your failures ain't going to define you unless you let it define you. You either go hard or you go home, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's one of the things, that's how I got the position I'm in, you know? You know what I'm saying? I, I had to, I had to make something happen. I had to make something happen in my life to make, to make it work. I didn't want to work for nobody, bro. I couldn't take a regular job, bro. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I had to make money somehow, somewhere. I had to make. I had to make my own money, man. Like you, you gotta. That's one thing you gotta do in life. You gotta, you gotta take strides. You gotta learn. You gotta get your ass whooped first, and you just gotta, you gotta go in there, learn from your mistakes, and, and you eventually get over everything. And I apply with this Raptor team, man. They gotta, you know, they just gotta. Hang in there. Hang in there, man. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying about you. They ain't going to define you. Uh, they don't know your heart and what what you can do in the future. This is a young team. We got we got to learn, man. We got to take these ass whoopers. And one day, we're going we gonna to thank LeBron for whooping our ass, bro. I'm not mad at LeBron. I mean, I think some people think Raptor fans are supposed to be mad at LeBron. Why? He's a, I mean, he's a great player. I mean... If anything, we need to be thanking him for not going easy on us because that's what's going to make us better. The reason why we got better this year is because we got our ass spanked the last couple of years by him. We would have never made this change. I'm telling you, we would have never made this change if we didn't get our ass swept last year and lost to him the year before in the Eastern Conference Finals. He's helping us. He doesn't. I, I, I don't even know if he knows that he's 
actually helping us become better. Like, we're actually going to be better because of him. And Isaiah Thomas hit it right on the head. This is someone who was on that team. That's why I played that clip in the beginning. By the way, thank you to my girl, Lindsay Lasanti. She lost her uh, YouTube page to the NBA a couple of months ago. And uh, she just hasn't wanted, you know, I, I told her, man, you got to continue these NBA videos, man. Cause you got people who appreciate that kind of stuff, man. And I told her, man, can you help me out get this clip from NBA TV? Because I did not have my TV on NBA TV tonight. So she hooked me up and gave me those two clips in the beginning that I was able to post for you guys. Because I thought I really wanted to post what Isaiah Thomas said. This is someone who played on that Detroit Pistons team that spanked Jordan ass three years in a row. Three years in a row. And Isaiah Thomas knows what it means because his Pistons team was getting spanked by Larry Bird. And so, when the Pistons were ready to win, they were ready to win. And Michael Jordan, the Pistons gave him some hard lessons three years in a row. Then that fourth year came, and the Pistons was get, were getting older, and they were, you know, they just... Their time was done. He was the one out of the East to step up. He was the one guy out of the Eastern Conference that said, look, I'm going to step up. I'm going to take over the league. Not just the conference. I'm going to take over the league. Because Magic Johnson also had his issues with his disease. So it was wide open in the NBA. And the Bulls were the first team to really take it. And they ruled the 90s. Kobe and Shaq, same thing. Michael Jordan retired from the Bulls. Guess who stepped up? Kobe and Shaq. Kobe and Shaq stepped up for about a good three years. They were made it to the final four years. Kobe hung in there. Kobe, Kobe went through the same thing. He hung in there. He has he played on some really bad teams with teammates like fucking Smush Parker and shit. Kwame Brown. This dude hung in there, bro. He hung in there. He, Kobe hung in there, bro. He hung in there. Got his ass whooped by Boston. Him and Paul Gasol concentrated, got it done against Orlando, and then they got their revenge against Boston again. You know what I'm saying? And so, it happens. And LeBron himself has been in this position. He didn't win a championship. It took nine years. It took him nine years to win his first championship with that Cleveland Cavaliers team. Nine years. 2012 came into the league in 2003. 2012 finally won it against OKC. He finally learned how to become a champion. He got his ass whooped the year before, man. It was the darkest period of his career the year before. None of these Warriors ass whoopings was as dark as what he went through against the Mavericks the year before. I mean, this is when... People was on his nuts that year for even going to Miami and ditching Cleveland like he did. And people were ready to get to him when he failed to win the championship. They got on him. They got on him. That was the lowest of the low. He came back the following season, figured things out. And then he were unbeatable for two seasons, man. Then he won one with Cleveland. Finally got it done for Cleveland, man. So... The Mavericks. We can even say for the Mavericks. You know, they were looked at as one of the bigger chokers of the 2000s, bro. Went to the NBA Finals in 2006. Lost to the Heat. Never returned for another five years. It took them five years to get back to the point of where they needed to be. Five years. Including during that time, I believe this happened the following season. They got upset by the Golden State Warriors in the first round. You just thought... Mark Cuban, you need to blow this shit up. It's not getting it done with Dirk Nowitzki. He's a choker. All of this other shit. But you know what? They hung on. They hung on. Made some changes. Brought in Rick Carlisle. And eventually, they got it done. They got it done. Dwayne Casey uh, was the defensive coach on the team. Assistant coach. They got it done against the Heat. It took them five years, but they got it done, man. So, when it's your time, it's your time. It's just, well, it's not our time right now. We need to hang in there. It's not our time. This is a young team. What was this, the second youngest team left in the playoffs or something like that? Like, we're, 
young as hell, man. We got, we got, we got, we got some learning to do. Got some learning to do, and a lot of our guys off the bench, they ain't fully developed yet. You know, they're they're, they're a work in progress still. Um, we got more to add with this team. We got some moves to make. The only tough decision that Masai Ujiri has to make as of right now, and he can take his time making this decision, is is if if he's going to bring back Dwayne Casey, and you know. I don't know, but let me finish up my thoughts real quick because I'm, I'm going to talk about the offseason right after this. Um, but like Isaiah Thomas was saying, anything can happen. We're, you know, anything can happen. I still believe we're the team to really, you know, if LeBron decides to stay in the East, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, I know one thing for sure. He will stay with the Cavs if they win a championship this year. There's no way he's going to leave them. But I, I don't feel like they're winning the chip. I think the Warriors right now, they're just, they're just loaded. They're just locked and loaded. They know that they've actually got a small win of themselves because they're going to lose Clay Thompson. Um, what is it, next year? It's next year, isn't it? Uh, 2019? So they might lose them next year. They got, they got a window to win this year and next year, and that's going to be it for them. So... They got to figure out, you know, how to how to get these last couple of chips, man. So, you know, it, it just it is what it is, right? But for the Raptors, they need to just stay the course, man, because we've been developing our young players very well. And who knows? We could rule the 2020s, you know? We could rule the 2020s, man. I mean... You know, like I said, we can only get better, man. We can only go up from here, man. It's, it's. I don't believe we're going to get worse. I don't believe we're going to get better. I, I, like I've been saying, we, we're going to continue to be a problem in the East. So if anybody wants to get out of the East to the East Conference Finals, you're going to have to go through us. I mean, there ain't no easy way out. And we'll have the last laugh. I mean, people keep laughing at us, but we'll, we'll, we'll eventually have the last laugh. I'm not even worried about that. I'm not even worried about that. When it's our time, I'm, I'm coming after a bunch of people. I, I, there's a, I got a hit list. I got a hit list of people who I'm coming after. But um, right now, I just want to I want to apologize to two different people in the media, man. Um, and anybody else, this goes along with anybody else who been believing in us, man. Uh, but the two main people who have really been known for sticking by the Raptors in this series, particularly just this series here. Uh, it's Max Kellerman and uh, Charles Barkley. I just want to I want to thank y'all for believing in us first of all because y'all could have easily been those jackasses from those other shows and just you know laughed at us every time we uh, just appeared in the game. You know, um, you know what I'm saying. But you guys stuck by us, uh, particularly Max Kellerman and uh, Charles Barkley. I, I just hated that. You know, I'm apologizing for uh, on the behalf of the fan base because. Or the fact that we we kind of made you guys look bad, you know that because uh, I know you guys say we'll win the series, and um, you know I just I feel bad for that because I, I also had hope, but you know it's just not our time yet. And that's the one thing that I realized tonight. It's not our time yet, you know. I think we was thinking too early. It's still LeBron James' time, man, and, and but 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 his time is almost over. The good thing about that is his time is almost over. So we just got to hang in there. Like I said, we just got to hang in there. Just hang in there. We're eventually going to give it over the hump. I hope he stays in the East Conference. I'm, I'm, I've been telling people, like, people want him to go out to the West Conference so bad. No, I want the Raptors to be the team to throw, to, 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 to throw his ass. I wanted to throw him. You know what I'm saying? Um, I wanted to throw him, bro. <laughs> I don't want to have to wait until he leaves, man. I want to get his ass, bro. I want to get him in his cast, bro. I want to get him, bro. But, you know, I don't care if we got to get beat by him every year. Until we do it, I want to do it. I want to get him, bro. <laughs> I want to do it. So, like I said, you know, that that's what we're aiming for. That's what we're aiming for. But we shouldn't be aiming to just beat LeBron in Cleveland, man. We should be aiming to be even better than what we was last year. We should just keep working on things and and, and keep trying to win 60 games a year, man. Like, we, we should just keep doing that, man. Like, one of the things, the only thing that pisses me off about this season, because it's been a great season, the only thing that pisses me off is that 
we were healthy this year. <laughs> Injury wise, we were healthy as fuck. We really had minimal injuries. Guys barely missed any games. Like I was telling you guys, OG Ananubi. This guy had a serious injury, and what he missed like maybe three or four games or some shit. That was it. He played like over seventy games this year. He was available, and in sports, you have to be available. You know what I mean? You have to be available in sports. So that's the only thing, man. We've been so healthy this year, man. I kind of feel like we wasted a year for that reason, but, you know, hopefully we can just stay healthy as a team, man. That's all I can hope for um, because we, we, we really did a really good job of staying healthy this year. But either way it goes, I enjoyed this season. I, I, once again, I want to thank the Toronto Raptors for giving, providing the Raptor fans. I watched all 82 games, and... I wasn't even at home most of the season, man. I was in L.A., man. And I still caught most of the season, man. Like, I mean, all of the season. I caught all 82 games. I had to DVR most of them, man, watch them late at night. But I made sure I watched them all 82 fucking games, bro. It didn't matter, bro. I, I made sure I watched all 82 of my team's fucking games. Uh, I want to thank my boy Vinny for having, for, uh, having NBA League Pass so I could do that. <laughs> that was awesome of you, bro. I'm gonna see you in LA next week. But um, yeah, man, I, I, I'm just so I was so happy with the with the development that like I'm leaving this I'm leaving this season a lot more happier than I did last season. Last season I was not happy, bro. Last season I was really ticked with the Raptors. I was I wanted them to blow it up last year, man. I really did. This year, I don't want that blow up so much. I'm going to talk about what I really want out of this team because I think I think it's more of a retool that they need to do more than a rebuild type thing. Um, but I'll never forget some of the moments we had this year. The first really good moment that we had this year was when we beat the Houston Rockets on the road. Um, that was – well, really to me, I think when we beat the Portland Trailblazers on the road – couple of weeks before that we blew that team out that was the first time i really saw the new offense that they had really work for them and then the second time was against the rockets like a couple of weeks after that they really did i mean they were moving the ball with with, with precision and everything it, it, it was it was beautiful guys it, it was beautiful like like the team definitely was looking different like they were not looking like the same old raptors at that point uh uh, I'm trying to think of some other things. Uh, uh, beating the beating the Cavs, beating the Cavs back in January by 25 points, bro. Um, even though it didn't translate to the playoffs, I thought that was still a huge win. It was on national. It was the first game that we had on national TV this this year, um, and that was a huge moment. It still was a huge moment for us. Um, I'm trying to think of some other good moments. Oh, when we blew the uh, Celtics out at home twice. Uh, I always say with my victories against the Boston, the Boston Celtics. <laughs> we call them the Celtics, man. S A L T I C S, man. We call them the Celtics, not the Celtics. Um, <laughs> up here, up here in the North. But um, that was a good moment, and then the best moment of the season for me, and this was better than beating the Rizzers in the first round just uh, a couple of weeks ago, was actually. The three game stretch that we had in March. Uh, actually, it kind of started, but it kind of started with beating the Wizards on the road. Uh, and then, but that was the game that CJ Miles went off on ESPN. And then it was another ESPN game where we went off on the Pistons. DeMar DeRozan had that, that, that dunk, man. I will never forget that fucking dunk. Man, oh man, that shit was. The Raptor fans just took over the new Little Caesars Arena. I love that shit, bro. I love that shit. And uh, then I, I think the biggest moment of the season was when we beat the Rockets at home and ended that big-ass winning streak that they had. That was the biggest win of the season. That, that was the biggest win of the regular season was when we beat Houston at home. Um, Drake said we were going to win two before the game. So uh, that was unbelievable. And then... Uh, and then uh what what else was it guys? Uh and then after that we spanked the Knicks on the road. It was like the, the bench mob, that was the bench's best game. They just went off in that fucking game. They went off in that fucking game, man. 
So we had some good moments this year, man. Like like I said, we had a good regular season, bro. Um, it was more better than the past previous seasons because I felt like the team really did actually make adjustments to be a better team. And I felt like what they was doing legit, they just wasn't ready to beat LeBron. That's all it was. Like, you know, I know, I know last week I said that everything that they did during the season won't validate getting swept out of cast. But really it does because – to me, like I said, this team took so many steps in the right direction this season. And, you know, I give the White Cases some credit for that, for changing the style. But we still got to make the culture change, in my opinion, man. I, like I said, I'm going to talk about that in a sec while I lead off, this, lead off of this video. But, um... Like I was saying, to me, man, I, I just believe that the team had a really good year, and that doesn't mean that they can't even have an even better year next year. You know, this team got to work hard during the summer. Like DeMar DeRozan was saying, got to work harder, smarter. Um, one thing that, the, another reason why I want a coaching change, because I think the fundamentals on this team needs to get corrected. Uh, that's something that Becky Hammond, I think, would definitely apply that from the Spurs system to our system. We got to work on, like, we got to get that turnover number down. That, that, that's, that's something, that's been the biggest, the biggest fucking, um, like, flaw in the team this season. Is just the inability to get that number reversed around. Rebounding better needs to be another thing. Uh, we got to rebound the ball better, man. Just at times that that we let in too many second chance points on this team. So there's a lot of things we need to correct, uh, but you know fundamentally. But I do feel like the team made some big leaps this year. Uh, been a very productive year, and like I said, they just gotta hold on, gotta hang on, man. You got to hang on, man, because the wins will change at some point for this team, bro, but we're going to become a championship team. Um, we just got to, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to just hang in there, man. We got to hang in there. That's, that's, I don't know how many times I'm saying hang in there in this video, but that's what we got to do. We got to hang in there, man. We're close. We're actually closer than what people think. We're really fucking close. We just, we need a few changes. To put this team over the top. You know what I'm saying? It's just a few changes. It's some things mentally that we need to kind of correct too. But we'll get there, man. We'll get there. We'll get there, man. I'm not worried about this team, man. We'll get there. You know, it, you know, we just got to hang on for a sec. You know what I mean? But this has been a really good season. You know, like I said, I apologize to Max Kellerman and Charles Barkley. You know, um... You know, hopefully we, we, we can make it up. We can make it up in the next few years, man. Because, uh, uh, like I said, you know, I'm actually, I'm looking forward to the, to the just getting into the offseason, just, you know, taking a rest from this team a little bit. But I'm also looking forward to the next season. I really am. I'm looking forward to, to October coming because um, I think more than most years, most, you know, than our exits, I think for the first part, Probably since that 2014 season when we lost to the Nets in Game 7, I really am looking forward to seeing this team. Like, they made so many leaps and bounds this year that I think they're just going to come out guns a-blazing, you know. They're, they're going to really come out in full force, and they're going to... And, and they're going to... They're just... They're going to do well, man. You know, I just really believe in this team, man. I really do. I really do. I watched them tonight, and I'm like, this don't mean anything, man. This is a good this is a good lesson learned. Pick up your lesson. It's life. Life is all about lessons, and just learn from it and apply what you what you did. Like, like I said before, too, um, you know, um, LeBron himself had to learn. 
the Wayne Casey, I was watching his press conference too. He was saying um, somebody asked him a question about LeBron back in the 2011 NBA Finals, which changed since then. He said, dude, who's a smarter player now? Like, I, I remember LeBron was getting folded in that fucking series, man. He was getting folded. He is a different player since then, man. I got to admit. You know, he's a, he's a different player since then. He's he's totally got the game figured out. Like, he's got the game so figured out right now, man. I don't know if it's enough to beat the Warriors, but... <laughs> because I, I, I think the problem with the Cavs against the Warriors is it's the other players. When they go against the Warriors, they can't stop the other players. That's what it is, you know? And, um... But, like I said, with LeBron, he got it figured out. Like I said, the Raptors haven't gotten there yet. They haven't gotten there yet. But they will get there when they figure everything out. So, that's what we got to do, man. We just got to we gotta figure everything out. We got to continue to develop, develop our younger players. Uh, even in the Raptors 905 system, we got a good development going on there. That's what I appreciate from Masai Ujiri. We're so lucky to have Masai Ujiri as our general manager, man. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I just heard what happened with Stan Van Gundy finally getting fired today. What a dumpster fight the Detroit Pistons are right now, man. I'm so lucky to even be in the position I am with my Raptor team right now because it's a dumpster fire with the Pistons right now, man. I feel sorry for my Piston fan because, like, I make videos for the Lions, so I got a lot of Detroit sports viewers on my videos, man. I be feeling sorry for them because the Pistons just ain't shit right now. That That's a dumpster fire, and uh, they made the right move, though, but... They still got a long ways to go, man. They got to get the GM situation figured out. They got a long ways to go, and it's a lot of teams in the. It's a lot of teams in the NBA. They got a long ways to go. They got a long ways to go. So that's why I can't even complain right now. We don't got that far much to go. We just got one team. We got to get over the hurdle, man. Like everybody else got all of these problems, and they're like a long ways away from figuring out their problems, man. I feel good right now. My team going to be good for a while, bro. I ain't got nothing to be down about right now. You know, we ain't, like, nobody can compare us with the Atlanta Hawks because we're not the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks didn't have a situation like we had. The Atlanta Hawks had a whole bunch of players under contract, uh, basically one-year, two-year rental type players. They were a veteran team. They knew they had a small window, and it was going to close. And when Atlanta was done uh, after the, what was that, the 2015 East Conference Finals, they were done. The Atlanta Falcons, I mean, the Atlanta, Atlanta Falcons, the Atlanta Hawks were done. They were done. This team is just getting started. My Raptors are just getting started, bro. It is not the same situation. You cannot compare us with the fucking Hawks, bro. You just can't. We're not, we're not them. We're not even the fucking Clippers. We're not even the Clippers, bro. Um... Because that's another team that was built the same way, you know. We, we're built more like the Spurs. That's a team, if you want to compare us to a team, compare us with the Spurs. We're a lot like the Spurs. We're the Spurs of the Eastern Conference. We just don't go away. We don't go away. We always come back, bro. We always come back. We've been doing this for five straight years, bro. And we ain't going nowhere yet. But let's talk about the offseason, man, before I get on up out of here. So, uh, let's get into this offseason, though. Um, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going gonna, um, I'm gonna to get into more uh, more depth, like free agency. I'm going to probably look at, like, free agency, have that up on my screen. Like, look at some players that we can get. We can talk about the Freddie Van Vliet situation, uh, contract situation. We could, we could, you know, we could talk more about these things. Um I'm probably going to make that video. If, if I, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it tomorrow, but uh, I think I'm going to definitely be able to make it on Wednesday, though, um, uh, record it. So uh, get subscribed to the channel if you want to hear about it. If you're not, uh, I am going to talk about that later in the week. Um, so that's something for you guys to really look forward to. Um, you know, because uh, I'm definitely going to go over the uh, culture change. I'm going to go over everything about the offseason, like a little offseason preview. Because I'm probably not going to be able to talk about this Raptor team again. You know, I'm not going to be able to talk about the draft, uh, free agent moves, and all of that shit. I'm probably not going to be able to do all of that when that time comes up. So I'm going to have to talk about it now while I'm still in town. Because, um, like I said, I'm going to be going out. I'm going uh, to be out of town the whole damn summer. Um, I'll talk about that at the end of the video, though. But let's talk real quick about 
uh, off season shit real quick, like a quick glance over for those of you who might not be able to see that video. I'm gonna talk about it right now. Um, I want to start with uh, Freddie Van Vliet. We need to keep him at all costs. Um, I think he's the future of this team, man. Uh, this is a guy who could, because we're trying to figure out right now who's going to replace Kyle Lowry, and I don't, I don't necessarily think that we need to get a free agent or anything, uh, or even trade him. I think we could let him. Let him kind of ride out his contract and then put him in a situation maybe when his contract ends where he can go to a championship team and finally get a ring because if anybody deserves a ring, it's definitely Kyle Lowry. Uh, that, that's for damn sure. Um, but I think that, I think we could just ride out with Kyle Lowry and um, really groom the line right or Freddie Van Vliet to take his place in the starting lineup. Um, but Freddie Van Vliet had a hell of a year. Uh Huge upgrade also from um, Corey Joseph as well, man. Um, just as a player, three-point shooter and all of that. Um, he needs, one thing that, the only thing that he needs to work on is just getting healthier. Uh, he needs to rest his injury. I think that's probably the best thing about an early exit right now is that a guy like him could get you know, his injury rested up and um, get himself rested up for a new season and try to be healthy the whole year. Because um, he's been huge to this team. And... He, he's definitely a huge part. Uh, he's the main guy we got to really focus in on, on making sure we don't lose, you know, because uh, we definitely need him. Now, the second thing is Kawhi Leonard. Can we get Kawhi Leonard? Now, this would be hard. Uh, and and I'm, not, I'm not trying to, like, pull all my eggs into one basket and just hoping for Kawhi Leonard because it might not happen, man. It might not, we might not be able to get him more than likely. I, I, don't, I don't even know what the percentage of a chance that we can even get him, but... I think we need him more than any other. Uh, I think we need him more than any other team in the league. I do. Uh, I, I can't imagine how good of a situation it would be to have Kawhi Leonard up here, man. That I mean, that'd be that that'd change everything with the with this team, man. Because he's like the one guy. He's the one superstar that I know that's available out there right now that could definitely put this team over the top instantly, like next year instantly. You know. Um. You know, but I don't know how long it's going to take. And I don't even know what his situation is with San Antonio. I don't know if he's staying or not. We got to find out about that. Uh, then you had the whole Paul George thing. But I think he's going to the Lakers. I think it's pretty obvious he's going to the Lakers. I mean, it was always it was always built up for him to go to the Lakers. So if he doesn't go to the Lakers, I'm fucking surprised. But, but Paul George is out there. And I know people have been talking about him being a choker and all of this stuff. But... I still wouldn't mind having him. I, I, I don't care what nobody says. I still wouldn't mind having Paul George. Because we still need a third legitimate superstar on this team. You know, so we, we really can't be picky with who it is. I don't even mind if we even take Melo. Uh, you know, I, hope, I don't know what his contract is on the next year. I think, I think he's getting close to his contract expiring. So, I don't think it's next year, though. I think it might be the year after that. But I still wouldn't even mind taking old-ass Melo. Because Melo... He won't even be a starter. He'd just be someone that come off the fucking bench. If he accepts a role off the bench and to just help us get threes in the basket, I wouldn't even mind that. So that's a, that's a lot of different players I'm not even... At this point, we can't afford to say no on nobody. I mean, we need all the help we can get. So, you know, even a, even a DeMarcus Cousins coming off that injury he's got, you know... If, you know, if we got to find a way to go get Boogie Cousins, man. We just got to go get Boogie Cousins. He always wanted to be a Toronto Raptor, man. Uh, he's always had hints like he wanted to be a Raptor. He even wore the Toronto Raptor shorts. I, I'll never forget that. This nigga wore the Toronto Raptor shorts like a couple of years ago. Uh, I think he always wanted to play for us, man. Uh, it just never made it work out. But, um, I mean, he, he will be huge. Uh, you know, I love Valanciunas, but he I think he'll be an upgrade over Valanciunas. But um, Valanciunas as well, let me say one thing about Valanciunas. He played with a lot of heart tonight. Um, we, we damn near almost made a game of it uh, because of him. And he's another player that improved year to year as well. So uh, Valanciunas, uh, I love Valanciunas, man. Uh, he's a, he's still young, and that's the thing about Valanciunas. He's still fucking young. Um, but, uh, yeah, we can get him as well. Um well, there's a lot of different guys in the league that we could take a look at, and um, you know, it, it, you know, it's it's it's. But we got to get something done. We got to make 
there's got to be a serious change or two within the team. Uh, and that's what we mean by a retooling because they don't need a rebuild. They're not even, we're not even at that point. This is not an old, old teams have to rebuild, not young teams. Um, that's what people have to understand. You don't blow up young teams. What are you talking about? Uh, for anybody that, that says this ain't easy to blow up, you, you really don't know what the hell you're talking about. This ain't three years ago where the, the where a, uh, where something like that would have mattered. Or even last year, something like that would have been more appropriate. Not after the year we had. Not when you got a team that's young. You don't, you don't do that. You keep what you got. You continue to build off of what you got. And you find a way to make it work. And like I said, we need to do a couple of things uh, to, to make that happen. I don't know how we're going to make that happen, but we need to make that happen. We need to make a serious, like, Serious roster change. Um, but nothing too big, though. Uh, just a serious roster change. Um, and, and, and then that's it. Um, What was I about to say? Uh, but uh, like I said, we could, we could do some things. Uh, you know, Serge Ibaka, he might be the one dude. Uh, I'm sorry, I got distracted. That's why I was so quiet for a sec. Uh, Serge Ibaka might be the one dude that we need to look at too. If we could get something for him. It's going to be hard to move his contract though. Um, you know, He's not even 30 yet either, but uh, we got to look at that. Um, I'm not ready to give up on the – I think DeMar DeRozan is still the heart of this team. I'm not ready to give up on him. But the only way I would give up on DeMar DeRozan is if, if it's the only way we could get Kawhi Leonard. Like, that's the only fucking way. Um, if it's not for that, I don't think we should be moving him. But it, it's going to be hard for Masai to actually make a move like that, make any moves really with this team at the top. But I think he could figure something out, uh, something creatively like he did with C.J. Miles last year and just sort of see uh, what we can do. Um, you know, uh, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens for sure. Now, um, coaching, coaching-wise. Now, I talked about this in the last... I made a video yesterday. I want you guys to check that one out. Uh, and I also talked about it in the previous video. But I'm going to talk more about it in the next video. But I'll just talk a little bit about it, about it here. Now, obviously, the first thing that needs to be figured out is if Masai Ujiri and MLSE, what they're going to do with Dwayne Case. Is, is it, are they going to ride it out with him? I mean, the guy's a coach of the year candidate. Um... For me personally, I'm okay with Dwayne Casey. I call him at peace with Dwayne Casey. But one thing that made me realize about this series, because I, I, I really didn't want Dwayne Casey after the 2015 season after we got swept by the Wizards. But he's proven to be a really good head coach. But is he a great head coach that could get us to the next step? Because I, I look at Dwayne Casey like Steve Kerr and I go Golden State. I, but the only difference is I give Mark Jackson a lot of credit for the Warriors being as good as they became uh, more than Steve Kerr. But Steve Kerr did. What's, what's their Phil Jackson, though? I think you can make that decision. And I don't think you should be afraid to make that decision because one thing that the Raptors need to do, they need to take the next step. And I think taking the next step involves a coaching change. The Bulls had to do it. In order for Michael Jordan to have got past Pistons, guess what they did? They hired Phil Jackson. They get and, and Kobe and Shaq. In order for them to have finally won their first championship, Phil Jackson. <laughs> 
LeBron James going down to Miami and playing for Pat Riley and Eric Spolstra. It takes changes like that in order to get to where you need to get to. It does. Even for the Cavs back in 2016, David Black, Tyron Lue. I was telling people that year, Tyron, I knew I was telling people, Tyron Lue going to be good for this team. It's gonna, he's going to be a good coach for this team. Guess what happened? Tyron Lue. You can't be afraid to make that change. That... That might be the one thing that holds the Raptors back is actually keeping on and keeping on with Dwayne Casey. They might need to make that change. Now, like I said, I'm not opposed to Dwayne Casey. If Masai Ujiri chose to keep him, I'm not going to be like some other Raptor fans to be mad as fuck. Because, like I said, I've come to peace with Dwayne Casey. Like, you know, but I do think we need our Phil Jackson and the two coaching candidates that I have at the top. Or Jerry Stackhouse promoting him, or somehow, some way, going to go get Becky fucking Hammond. Okay, I just really feel like both of those coaches are built to win championships. They're built to win championships. Becky Hammond did it as a player. Jerry Stackhouse won one in the G League. They know what it takes to. Get to the finals, bro. They know what it takes. Even without any NBA head coaching experience, I believe they still could do it. Tyron Lue didn't have any fucking head coaching experience. Steve Kerr didn't have any head coaching experience. Phil Jackson didn't have any head, uh, head coaching experience. Doesn't matter. You can still get there in your first year, as a matter of fact. Um, but I feel like those two coaches, because Stackhouse, he's already been a proven guy. He's done it with the system. He's coached most of the young players that we have in our core of our bench. They're familiar with him. And I I love to see Stackhouse coach up uh OG Ananubi. That 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 right there is just I mean, that's something that I'm just I'm, I'm gleaming about right now. If he can ever get his hands on fucking OG Ananubi and, and building him up. And uh maybe having more time with a guy like Malcolm Miller uh coming off the bench. Uh, even having more time with Pascal Siakam, who's still a project for us. You know, uh, like, this dude still, sky's the limit on Pascal Siakam, man. Guy's only 24 years old. This guy could be a hell of a player by the time he gets into his late 20s, man. So, this, I mean, we got, shit. And then Becky Hammond coming from the Spurs system, everything that she's learned from Pop, she's, she could apply it to this team because... One thing I know she's going to do, as soon as she comes in here, she's going to she's gonna have the fundamentals figured out. She's going to clean that shit up. And uh, then she, like, win the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, did Becky Hammond win the uh, Summer League the year before or some shit like that? So, dude, she, she knows how to coach some men, bro. She knows how to coach men. I, I have no doubts about that. Like I said, most of the younger players, I said this in the previous video or the video before that, most of the men on the team, uh, one of Jerry Stackhouse's assistants um, is a female coach. So I don't think that it'll be a huge adjustment. Maybe for Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan it will be. But, hey, if Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan could adjust their entire game to fit the new offense that we had, then they could adjust to anything, to be honest with you. Um... They really can't. Like, they can really adjust to anything, in my opinion, bro. If you can make that kind of change, bro, you can adjust to anything. I, I mean, oh, I'm serious. You can you can really adjust to anything. And it's just a matter of, uh, of uh, making those changes, man. So... You know, uh, it's just it's one of those things, man. Um, you know, I think they can do it, man. It, it's something that it's something that'd be interesting because the thing about it is, you know, and, and now with Stan Van Gundy getting fired, I'm, I'm getting a little scared that maybe the Pistons will pick her up. But I don't think uh, my man's. Um, I just I really don't think. Uh, the owner of the Pistons, uh, 
uh, the owner of the Pistons. What's his fucking name? Uh, this goofy ass nigga, bro. I just, I really don't think he's smart enough. Like, just like the Bucks, um, uh, uh, Tom Boris. I, I just really don't believe that he's smart enough to go get a coach like Becky Ham. I feel like Becky Ham might not even be hired this summer. Just to be honest with you. Oh. Uh, but man, that'd be huge if we if we hire her, man. She'd be the first female head coach in any of the four major pro sports. I mean, that'd be just so fucking huge. And um, it's de it's definitely something I'm rooting for to happen. But if it doesn't happen, it's no no strain off our back. But at least we got Jerry Stackhouse, though. I mean, we got options. See, that's the thing. We got options, but. I just don't want the team firing Dwayne Casey and going to get any of the other mediocre hires like a um, David Black. I think I heard out there, and uh, who else is out there? Booting hoes and all these scrub ass niggas. I don't want them getting any of them. Uh, I like Lloyd Pierce from the Sixers, uh, Sixers head coach, but I think he's gonna take that Atlanta job though. So he's out of the he's out of the uh, question. Um, but, um, and, and I forgot to say one thing. The Pistons, 2003, they went from Rick Carlisle to uh, Larry Brown uh, to help them get over the top. So, like I said, it, I, think, I think it might be something that needs to be done. Uh, but those are my top two is Jerry Stackhouse and Becky Hammond. Uh, I, I just think that it's something that we got to look at. You know what I mean? I think it's something that we got to look at. Uh, for sure, and I know Messiah's going to take his time on this decision um, because it's a hard decision to make. I, I, I don't want to be Messiah Jury right now because that's going to be a hard-ass decision to make. It could be the wrong decision, and he's got a tough summer ahead of him because he's got to make something happen uh, with this team, man. Uh, it, it, you know, I, I, I forget. I don't think we even have a first-round draft pick this year. So... He's got to make a... He, he's got to really get... He's got to really be creative. Um, so we'll see what happens, man. But like I said, again, I'm proud of my Raptors team this year. Ugly finish, but you know, I rather I, I say this: I rather lose to the Cavs over and over again than lose to anybody else in the East, man. Because I would have hurt a lot more had I lost to the Wizards the last series. Because I know we could beat every other team in the East, you know, but. Eventually we're gonna get over that hump. Eventually we will get over that hump. I don't I don't care how long it takes, we'll eventually get over that hump, you know. And so I hope all Raptor fans just keep believing in this team. We're gonna be alright. Just like Kendrick Lamar said, we gonna be alright. We gonna be alright. Alright. Now uh, just close the statements because it's uh just in case um you guys will catch my off season video. This might be the last time you hear from me until the fall. So, closing statements, man. Um, first off, for my Lions fans, y'all going to see me. I don't know when y'all going to see me. If it's August or September, I might decide to not even come back until October. So, um, I don't even know. I don't even know. But, uh, but I'm going to see y'all later. Uh, you know, a, a horrible-ass fucking football team. You know, it's sad, man. My NBA, my, 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 NBA, my NFL teams are sad. Just keep losing, bro. Just keep that my team too. Just keep, just keep losing, bro. But uh, yes, yeah, so I'll see y'all later. But, but uh, my Raptor fans, I'll see y'all in the next video, hopefully. But if not, I'm gonna see y'all in October as well. There's one thing I'm gonna try to do more of on my channel. I'm gonna try to do more Raptor videos, man. Uh, that's one thing that I haven't been able to really make any videos at all. Like I said, when I'm in LA, I don't, I don't got my equipment. I don't got my computer. Um, to make videos and shit like that, so it's harder for me to do. I've been kind of making LA my second home because um, I've been building up my business out there, I've been getting back into the porn game out there. So I've been doing other shit on the side, man. I'm trying to make this money. I'm trying to become a millionaire, bro. I, I got strides to make. It. I'm I'm gonna become a millionaire, bro. That's that's the one thing about me. I'm gonna become a millionaire. I've been hanging around with millionaires all of these fucking years, all of these. Actors and Hollywood producers and directors and shit. I need to become a fucking millionaire, man. I got some big stuff. I got some big shit. I want to do to change this world. I want to rescue a lot of women, man. Um, 
I, I got, I got big, I got big things I want to do, man. I, 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 I got, I got some things I need to get out of this life, man. Before I, before I leave this life, man. I got some things I need to do, man. And so, I'm making it happen right now. I'm not staying in one place. I'm not, re I'm not working these regular jobs. I'm not gonna stay in the same spot. I'm, I'm on the move, bro. I'll be traveling, bro. I'm on the move. Y'all don't see me, bro. Y'all don't see me because I ain't complacent, bro. I'm gone. I, hey, with the Raptors, it, with the Raptors season ending early right now, I can travel. I already told. <laughs> I guess I already knew what was happening, bro, because, um, because uh, I told Tony Yaz, bro. Hey, man, you want to come to LA? <laughs> I told Ella, she was like, hell yeah, I want to go to L.A. I told her, man, we about to get our tickets, bro. We about to go there next weekend, man. I'm about to go to L.A. I'm about to go back to L.A. next weekend, bro. I'm about to hang out there for a few weeks. So I can't wait to see my boy Vinny, Dante, and the crew. Uh, I'm, I can't wait to see all of y'all out there, man. I can't wait to get back to La La Land, man. I hate the weather, but I can't wait to get back out there, man. Oh. Um, you know, uh, I'm going to just try to rest up, man. I got some things, like I said, I got some things to take care of. I'm going to be gone, bro. I'm going to be gone this summer. I'm going to be gone. I can't be in the same spot like the rest of y'all, man. Y'all be staying in the same spot, same city and shit. I can't do that. I got to travel, bro. I got to make moves, bro. I got to make moves and money, bro. I can't do what y'all do, bro. I'm different from y'all. I'm way different from y'all. I got to make moves. I encourage y'all to make moves, too. Y'all got to stop being in the same spot. And realize life is too short to be in the same spot, bro. Y'all got to make some moves, bro. Y'all be staying in the same fucking spot and shit, man. Some of y'all don't even got families and shit. Y'all need to be doing some other shit, bro. For real. You going to get so much out of this world, man. For real. You got to be on the move. But I got principal photography in Montreal. I'm about to get back into filming movies as well next month. June 11th. I got to be back in Montreal. Film a couple of movies. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be gone, man. So, I'm going to have a pretty good summer, man. I'm going to be, but the the, uh, the the focus is on the prize, man. You know, getting back, this Raptor team, got to get back. Got to get back and just keep keep fighting, man. You know, that's it. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. Just got to keep fighting, man. Got to keep fighting. Got to hang in there and keep fighting, man. But. I see y'all motherfuckers in La La Land this week. I'm about to go get my plane ticket. I'm about to go get my plane ticket tomorrow, bro. I'm about to go buy my fucking plane ticket. And get, but I got to get my ass to work, though. I've been talking way too long. I got to get my ass to work. All right, y'all. Peace, man. See y'all later, bro. And uh, big ups. Big ups to Max Kellerman and Charles Barkley for believing in us, bro. I really appreciate that from y'all, bro. You know, Charles Barkley always I had our back, man. I remember he was hanging out with Ralph, our uh, old mayor for Ralph Ford up here, bro. He love our city, bro. He ain't got that. He ain't got that dumbass USA mentality where, you know, you know what I'm saying. He's just so stuck in the U.S. bubble. You know what I'm saying. He, you know, he out there. You know, he out there making moves. You know what I'm saying. But all right, dog. I'm talking too much. All right, y'all. Peace, man. I went on a little rant. <laughs> all right, y'all. Peace.